Hello everybody, welcome back to another video, as today we're going to be talking about the Emmett Turner's draft day and uh, the trade that they made on that day as well, as uh, I know, I know, I, I, I'm a few days late, it, the draft has been long gone now and we're almost near free agency, which I am very, very excited for free agency day, uh, but if you guys haven't seen my Discord or on Twitter, uh, I unfortunately lost my nanny to cancer, uh, it's uh, been very tough uh, to say the least. Uh, and it's been very tough for the family and even myself that I had to take uh, a week break off YouTube uh, just because I couldn't handle everything that I was dealing with, with work and YouTube and, you know, dealing with, you know, my nanny's passing. Uh, it's been very hard and I'd like to say thank you guys for all the kind words that I've seen on my Discord server uh, and not just that on my Twitter as well. Uh, thank you guys so very much. It helps a lot. Uh, you know, I worry about this channel a lot and trying to get videos out on a timely fashion because I want I want you guys to see these. I want you guys to be in the know and everything like that. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you got to take a break. And even I noticed that and uh, I took a little bit of a breather and got to relax with some family members and uh, took some time off of work. And now I'm feeling a lot better about everything. And so instead of talking about this, let's get into talking about some hockey because that's what we're here to do is talk about some damn hockey. So let's get into that, eh? It's getting to talk about some damn hockey because my lord, I don't know how many times that took me to get through that whole fucking, the whole thing without messing up or saying something wrong. It, it, it was incredible. It, it's very hard to talk about someone passing and trying to get it across to you guys. It's very, very hard, but let's get into this damn video because I'm ready to talk some fucking hockey, baby. All right, let's go. So let's talk about the Edmonton Oilers draft day. Uh, and this draft day was, eh. Yeah, we didn't get a whole lot of great picks, to say the least. They were a lot of, like, Hail Mary type of picks. And, I mean, we only had one first. And then, from there, we had a uh, fifth, a sixth, and a seventh. We didn't have high-quality picks. Like, from round five on, you're really just throwing gambles. And you're just throwing Hail Marys out of the sky. But we really didn't get good quality selections. And I wasn't even really a big fan of our first overall selection. I thought we should have went after a defenseman. But of course, we go after another winger instead of going after maybe a Ryan Chesley, who I was a big fan of, or Lane Hudson, who I was even a bigger fan of, and I wish we really got him as well. But let's get into the first thing that we're going to be talking about here, and that's the trade that happened. This was the very first thing that the Edmonton Oilers did at draft day, is trade away. Guess who? Zach Cassie, baby! Fucking adios, you fucker! Woo! Zach Cassian is off the team, baby! Let's go! Oh my god! Finally, Zach Cassian is gone from the Edmonton Oilers and a dump of a trade where we send Zach Cassian to the Arizona Coyotes, a first round pick, which was the 29th overall selection. Do not worry, we got the 39 or 32nd overall selection in the first round back in the deal. And we traded away our 2024 third round pick and 2025 second round pick. And honestly, I love this deal. I think this deal works really well for us. You know, we didn't have to give up that much to get rid of a player like Zach Cassian, only having to give up a third and a second round pick. Yeah, it might have been a little bit steep, I guess, compared to the Peter Morazic deal that we have seen. But honestly, this wasn't a bad deal. It really wasn't. We get... The, you know, are still our first round selection. We still are able to make that first round selection, right? And I think that's a big thing. You know, if we're still able to make that first round selection, I think that's still a win-win for us, right? And even, yeah, you look at what uh, Toronto had to trade away. They only had to trade away a first and then they picked uh, the second round selection at 38, which is not a bad deal. But you really think about it, Zach Cassian is just more of a liability. With Chicago, they could use Peter Morazic a little bit more than what they could probably use out of Zach Cassian. So it's an understandable deal here. And honestly, those sec that third and second round picks, quite honestly, it's a third round pick that's in 2024, which is next year, which is not that big of a deal. And 2025 pick, which is like a good while away. And this is going to be years where we're contending. You know, you know the, the $3.2 uh, $3 million that we would have been using on Zach Cassie, now it's freed up to a point where we could use it for a goaltender. Or if we needed to pick up a, well, we do need to pick up a top four defenseman now. And, you know, whoever else that we need to add to the forward court, it frees up some space for us to give us some more flexibility. Which I think we're almost near $19, $20 million in cap space right now. So I absolutely love this deal. Now, with that first overall selection, we selected Reed Schaefer from Spruce Grove, Ontario, playing in the WHL for the Seattle Thunderbirds. And how did I like this guy? 
honestly, this is, uh, I don't know. This is a guy that really rose a lot in the draft. You know, this was a guy that wasn't uh, doing very good in his first year in the WHL. Only had two points in 18 games. The next year, he blew up. 58 points in 66 games. Did even better in the playoffs, having 21 points in 25 games. He was one of the fastest risers in the NHL Central Scouting. He went from 85th to 31st, jumping up 54 spots. So this is a guy that really jumped up high. This was a guy that was supposed to go sometime in the late second round, and the others reached for him. Now, is this going to be a good pick for us? Honestly, this is a guy that's going to be a high risk, high reward type of guy. You know, there's a lot of things that still needs to be worked on him. They are talking about him being the future Zach Cassian. Honestly, I don't see that. I think there's a lot of uh, more skill out of this guy than, than Zach Cassian. But the biggest thing is he has big NHL size. A uh, great fi uh, finishing ability, has some great physical play, highly competitive. The biggest thing that he needs to improve upon, though, is his skating. His skating is still not the greatest, and that's one big thing to note. He's he's all right, but there's still a lot of work, and that's a lot of the thing with the big power forwards is they always need to work on their skating. Their skating is not always the looking the strongest, neither their strides. As some guy is ripping down the street, interrupting my video, man, what the fuck? Anyways... Uh, this guy is definitely a high risk, high reward type of guy. Uh, but we'll get a few quotes from some of the uh, the scouts. We'll we'll rip it off from Low Tide from the Athletic. We we love our boy Low Tide, but he talks about uh, you know uh, Reed Shaver is developing story in this year's draft. A projected mid round selection early in the year. His size is six feet uh, three, two hundred fourteen pounds, big boy, and enough skill to score thirty two goals in sixty six games in the WHL. He gains a net front position easily, and he hits hard and 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 often. Like Goche, Nathan Goche, who also was selected in this recent draft, he's more of a power forward, but does uh, does present an intriguing option as a big distri a distributor with score a goal scoring abil ability. If I could speak English for crying out loud, and then we'll pull out another one here from Chris Peters as well. A late bloomer that broke out this season. Shaver was a major part of Seattle's run to the WHL Finals. He's a uh, he's big, skates well for his size, and puts up 32 goals in 66 games this season. He plays uh, the game uh, with strength, but also has a soft touch on the puck, which has led him to rising up the draft boards throughout the season. And that's most likely why the Edmonton Oilers selected this guy. They've probably seen a lot more potential than what most people have. Now, this guy's potential is about a middle six power for it, but a lot of people see him as a top nine type of guy, and that's what I kind of see him as. Is I could see him as a tweener middle six guy, but he's going to be probably most likely a top nine guy who's going to produce a decent amount of points for you to seize him. Kind of like a Warren Fogel. You know, he's probably going to be a little bit more physical than a Warren Fogel. But if he can continue that, you know, developing his skating ability, develop that hockey sense a little bit better, and continuing to put up, you know, that, that finishing ability and you be a great playmaker as well, Reed Schaefer could be a really nice offensive piece for the future of the Edmonton Oilers. Moving forward, though, uh, we'll get into the draft, the rest of the draft, which is very unknown. So I'm going to be pulling it from the director of Animar Scouting and Tyler Wright. He's going to be kind of, uh, we're going to read some of his quotes because honestly, there's not a whole lot that we could bring up for a lot of the the the, the players that we're going to be talking about. So uh, in uh, round five at 168 overall, we drafted Samuel Johansson, uh, the goalie from the Swedish Elite League. Uh, and uh, honestly, it's a scary pick. You know, it didn't look like he did that well in the uh, the under-20 league there for Brunus. Uh, in 31 games, he went 9-20 and 20 with an 883 save percentage and a 3.25 goals against average. Not in a phenomenal goalie, but Wright was uh, saying here, he's obviously one of our targets. We think we lucked out, uh, out with getting him where we did. And uh, it's another goaltender to get in the system and try to develop. So maybe it is one of our future goalies, but honestly, I really don't see Johansson being a future goalie for the Edmonton Oilers. And, and you know, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, this is definitely a guy that I don't, we don't have a whole lot of information on. There's no scouting reports. There's not a whole lot of game footage on the guy. So there's not a whole lot to take a look at for Johansson. Uh, and that's the same with the next two guys as we drafted in this uh, sixth round, 190th overall. We got Nikita Yesia from Russia. Uh, he played a little bit in the MHL, I'm pretty sure. The VHL, I think it was this year. 
uh, in the MHL. Uh, in the VHL, he had 37 or in 37 games, he had five points. In the MHL, he had about seven points in 14 games and did quite well in the playoffs as well. Uh, this is a guy that uh, they really like him. He's another big and competitive guy on the back end, Wright says. That's all he really said about him. But uh, a guy that's really physical, apparently, really puts up big hits. Uh, was the guy that did a knee-on-knee -knee collision with another guy in the league. So he's a big, burly guy. Uh, even though he's only listed at six foot one, 187 pounds, apparently he's a big boy. Uh, he hits tough, and there's not a whole lot of information on him either. Uh, and then we'll move on to Joel Mata, the centerman. Uh, he's a uh, Finn guy. He came out of the university that Luca Musenberger went to there in the University of Vermont. Uh, this guy has a little bit of a scouting report on them, but uh, he's it's because he's mostly 20s, uh, one of the overagers. This was his last year uh, in the draft. He's definitely a very defensive guy. Wright said here um, that he's another guy that's good on faceoffs, penalty kill, and goes to the net. So they really, really like him for his defensive ability. And that's the thing. Like, with these late picks, you're really just kind of trying to build out your depth, right? What you need for your depth. Because these guys might not, not be in the top six. Like, it's not definitely not a guarantee they, these guys even make it to the NHL. Uh, but the Joel Mata and a lot of the scouts say that he's a really good defensive guy. Uh, plays really well at the draw. And he's a big guy, too. Six foot two and two, uh, 201 pounds as well. Uh, so just another future guy. And he's near my birthday, July 6, 2002. So he's just a uh, year younger than me. And uh, just one day away from my birthday. So uh, hopefully he does make it. Because uh, I already like him that he's close to my birthday. Uh, but that's just about it there, guys. Uh, we talked about everyone. Now, how do I think about this draft? Could we have done better? Who could we have gone off? Uh, gone after now in the later rounds. I mean anything kind of goes. I mean, I'm no scout I'm not no expert with uh, Prospects, but I think we could have went with somebody a little bit better than Reed Shaver We've been going after forwards for years the past few years in the first round I thought maybe we could have went after a defenseman like Ryan Ryan Chelsea or late Hudson who a lot of uh, Scouts and a lot of the analytics were really talking this guy up and I really like the way that Lane Hudson looks This guy could have been a killer a uh, guy for just the future of any team in Montreal, of course, selecting him. Uh, fuck, Montreal is going to be having a killer defensive core here in the future. Uh, but Lane Hudson really had a good look, and I thought we may have needed a defenseman, but I guess the scouting for the Edmonton Oilers thought we needed more wingers and a big winger at that with Reed Schaefer. Uh, and I mean, it's not a bad idea, right? We're building for the future, and we're building for guys that could potentially help us out in the playoffs. And Reed Schaefer could be that guy. He's just going to be a long ways out. From being an NHL, that's the problem with the Reed Schaefer. Maybe he's a guy that we trade away for a, you know, a, a rental player or something like that. But, you know, Holland, he really doesn't trade a whole lot of his prospects away. Uh, but that's quite honestly it for me here, boys. Uh, that's uh, the entire draft there. Uh, that's everything that we really need to talk about. Quite honestly, I would give, probably give this, you know, a good, yeah. I gave it a good B minus. We did all right. You know, I didn't mind some of the selections we made. We could have done a lot better, and it's definitely got boosted up by Zach Cassian being traded away. It probably would have been a C C plus uh, with the drafting. With us doing the trade, it bumped it up to a B minus. Uh, because I really, I'm really glad that we got rid of Zach Cassian's contract, cleared up a little bit. Decent drafting, probably could have done a little bit better. But that's for it for me, boys. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And also make sure to go check out my video where I talk about Duncan Keith retiring. And I'll be ending it here. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Adios, amigos.